Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Die Gamma. I know I promised that we were going to be starting with L'Hopital's rule, but silly of me, I forgot that we hadn't even done differentiation. So instead, I would like to build up on uh, the, the concept of limits that we started. So I would like to be I would like to explain uh, the concept of continuity in this video. Basically, here's all the stuff we'll be covering in this video. So, uh, in the beginning, we'll be doing the definition of continuity, and uh, you know, basically how mathematically we define the concept. Then we'll be doing the types of discontinuities, and then finally, we'll be doing examples where uh, they tell us to analyze the continuity of functions. You know, they they'll give us a point. Then we have to, uh, you know, infer whether the function is continuous or discontinuous at that point. So let's get into it. Okay, so uh, let's assume we have this function, and I'm not going to write the definition of this function. And um, we're going to use this to make sense of the definition of continuity. So the definition of continuity says a function is continuous when the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit which is equal to the value of the function at that point here uh, the particular point is a x is equal to a so basically the limit as x approaches a from the negative side or, or values less than a of the function should be equal to the limit as x approaches a from the positive side or values greater than a which should in turn be equal to the value of the function you know how how we define the function at x equal to a because okay so now setting the left hand limit and the right hand limit equal to each other ensure that you know that extrapolating from both sides around a we end up on the same value which is then again um, reinforced by the fact that the function is the function is defined at that point to be you know, equal to our estimation so the way I like to think about it is a continuous function is a function that can be drawn without lifting the pen now now setting the left hand limit and the right hand limit equal to each other we ensure that there are no breaks as we approach this 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 value a and also that the function exists at that point and it you know agrees with our estimation from the left hand side and the right hand side because if there were like an like a gap here because if if the function were not defined it, it just won't make sense because you know th there is no function a, a function is continuous and the limit is just an approximation so we need this final component in order for the, our function to be continuous but there should be a real value here not just an estimation now I would like to discuss the types of discontinuities so okay First, let's assume that we have a piecewise function f of x is equal to 2x when say um, say it's x when uh, x is less than 6 and takes the value of 8 otherwise when x is greater than or equal to 6. Now let me just graph it out for you guys. So it's gonna look something like this. This is when x is equal to 6 and then it takes up the value of constant 8. So this is y equals 8. So now 
let's um, assume that we were to calculate the left hand limit as at x is equal to 6 now for when we are really close to 6 like when uh, we're, we're super close to 6 this thing applies so we we'll have to use this definition of the function to actually estimate a value at x is equal to 6 and that turns out to be 6 because y is equal to x so the LHL or let's say the limit as x approaches 6 from the negative side of f of x is 6 and the RHL for the RHL we need a value which is slightly greater than 6 right so you know this part of the function applies we need to use this to estimate value at 6 so a limit as x approaches 6 the positive side of f of x is 8 yeah because LHL we needed this side RHL we need this side for this part basically and yeah so basically our definition is a definition of a continuous function is violated because we had said that LHL should be equal to RHL and then finally they should be equal to the function at A like even like the first equality isn't being satisfied because LHL is not equal to RHL and when such a thing arises we call that a jump discontinuity because it's like you know we were we were going towards 6 then we like jump and there's a big there's a big uh, gap between the LHL and the RHL that's why yeah that's what we call the jump discontinuity okay now say we have a function g of x equal to say x squared when x is not equal to 2 and 6 otherwise when x is 2 let me graph this out for you guys again so the graph is gonna look something like Oops. Uh, this point is x is equal to 2 now we need uh, for, for calculating LHL we need um, the function x squared so the limit is x approaches 2 of x squared is 4 and even for the RHL we, we, we can use the same function is 2 plus of x squared is 4 so you know if you noticed it it's great in case you didn't let me explain so when when we have the same function for LHL and RHL you know both of them tend to be equal so LHL is equal to RHL in this case but uh, what can we say about the value of function at x is equal to 2 so for f of 2 we have to use this part of the definition which is equal to 6 but look at this LHL is equal to RHL but it's not equal to the value of function at that point yeah so that, that's why there's this gap right because the function isn't properly defined isn't officially defined at this point although we can estimate because it's the graph of x squares so we can just plug it in you know estimate from around these points from the LHL and from the RHL but the actual definition you know disagrees with our estimation but the, the thing is we can remove such kind of discontinuities by redefining this portion properly if this portion were say 4 instead of 2 
you know then lhl would equal rhl would then that would equal value of the function at 2 that's why you know since we can remove this discontinuity these discontinuities are called removable discontinuities by just you know changing this value this small value but like the jump discontinuity you can't change cuz you know there are there are two different functions entirely that's why you have to officially test for lhl and rhl but in this case since lhl and rhl you know use the same function for estimation you know even without even without showing this calculation we can find we can reasonably assume that lhl is equal to rhl so let's do our first example now so we have f of x equals yeah this part has most of the piecewise functions so yeah we are accustomed to it guys x cube plus 3 when x is not equal to 0 and 1 when x is equal to 0 they are telling us to um, analyze the continuity of the function at x is equal to 0 you might have guessed that already okay so first off we start by the by uh, the LHL left hand limit so the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side and uh, when we are not at 0 but really close to it we need to apply this basically this we need to apply this for both the LHL and the RHL because you know we are never at 0 when we are estimating when we are taking the limits so it's x cube plus 3 just substituted like a normal limit problem we get 3 time for the RHL the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side x cube plus 3 is 3 so anyway since we were using the same function for LHL and RHL you might have guessed that it's like the uh, removable discontinuity case that I discussed but let's calculate the value of f of 0 now f of 0 is 1 by the definition now since LHL is equal to RHL but it's not equal to f of 0 it's a removable discontinuity yeah we just discussed that hope you remember So it's not continuous at x is equal to 0 but we can make it continuous we can remove the discontinuity by you know redefining this portion of it so anyways uh, let's move on now we have the function f of x equals uh, 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 all over x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2 and 5 when x equals 2 now I'll show you two methods of calculating the LHL LHL basically now the limit as x goes to 2 negative side of uh, I think I should write that you know they want us to find continuity test the continuity at x is equal to 2 but you know I thought you might have guessed by now anyways limit is x approaches 2 from the negative side of 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 all over x minus 2 now you can solve it like a normal limit problem we can just factorize, factorize out the numerator factorizing it out we get x minus 2 and 2x minus 1 all over x minus 2 and this cancels out because x is close to 0 I mean slightly very slightly less than less than 2 not 0 sorry so it's slightly very slightly less than 2 but it's not equal to 2 and write that if you want that's why we can cancel it out and then when we substitute we get 
टू टाइम्स टू या सॉरी दिस इज प्लस वन टू टाइम्स टू प्लस वन विच इज फाइव ओके दिस इज वन वे ऑफ कैलकुलेटिंग द एल एच एल और यू कैन यू नो स्टार्ट विथ विथ वॉट वी डिड फॉर द फर्स्ट मेथड टू एक्स स्क्वे माइनस थ्री एक्स माइनस टू ऑल ओवर एक्स माइनस टू एंड देन यू नो सिंस मोस्ट ऑफ आर आइडेंटिटीज वर वेन द वेरिएबल टेंडेड टू जीरो आई वुड लाइक टू यू नो यूज similar method so i will write this as so i will say that let h um equal let me say that let x equal to minus h i would tend take the limit as h tends to 0 so you know when it's really close to 0 not and not at 0 you know this makes sense because we wanted x to tend to a value which was slightly less than 2 and this if h is slightly less than 0 you know we can just replace we can just write the lhl this way we can just write the lhl this with the limit as h tends to 0 2 times 2 minus h the whole squared minus 3 times 2 minus h minus 2 All over negative h. Now I'll just explain this again because you know this might be a little hard to digest at first. So for the LHL, if you know the left-hand limit, we wanted x to tend to a value which was very slightly less than two. Okay, something like one point nine nine nine. Now I'm I just wanted to write because you know. we don't usually in a, in all our limit identities we had the variable tending to zero so all i did was introduce the variable substitution over here instead of writing x tends to values slightly less than 2 i said let x equals to minus h and then i let h be very very small so if like say h is 0.0001 then Then you know two minus that very small value will give us something like one point nine nine. Can add the nines as 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 you as close as you want to get. Okay, so I just made that substitution. Now let's just go ahead and open this damn bracket. Two times four minus four h plus h squared. Minus six plus three h minus two all over negative h. So just multiply everything in the bracket. Eight minus eight h plus two h squared minus six minus two plus three h all over negative h. Eight six into all cancel out. Is negative five. The limit as h approaches zero of negative five h plus two h squared by negative h. Since h is never zero in this limit, we can just cancel stuff out. So it will be five minus two times h, and when you substitute h as zero, all you're left with. Is one big five. I know this method is way long, and you guys might think, you know, why is there a need for this? But I'll tell you, this is a healthy practice because once we have, you know, complicated functions like the trigonometric function, where all of our identities are where the variable tended to zero, this this would seem like the most natural way of attacking a question. Okay, let let me do the RHL now. Now we already got the LHL equal to five. Let's work it out for the RHL. The RHL, the limit as x approaches two from the positive side of two x squared minus three x minus two 
4 x minus you might have guessed it LHL would equal RHL but you know we need to show it mathematically and it's all about showing in mathematics so now as I as I had done with the LHL in the in the second time I would like to do a substitution so I'll let x equal to plus h because we want x to be slightly greater than 2 and then again we let h approach 0 similar intuition like the one we did before 2 plus h the whole square minus 3 times 2 plus h minus 2 all over h and we'll just expand the hell out of it limit is h approaches 0 of 2 times 4 plus 4h four plus h squared minus 6 minus 3h minus 2 all over h limit is h which is 0 of 8 plus 8h 2h squared minus 8 minus 3h all over h this 8 this 8 cancelled out all we are left with is limit is h tends to 0 of or, uh, 5h 2h squared all over h we can cancel 1h out like before we end up with 5 this just goes to 0 on substitution so even the RHL equals 5 what about the f of 2 yeah even that's 5 right yeah so LHL equals RHL equals f of 2 so you know f of x is continuous at x is equal to 2 so uh, yeah we have the g of x equals 1 minus cosine of 4x all over 8x squared when x is not equal to 0 and k when x equals 0 and now they're telling us that it's continuous at x equals 0 and we need to find what k is yeah so you know we work the same way so since it's continuous we know the LHL equals the RHL equals f of 0 at x is equal to 0 obviously so yeah we even if we know like even if we calculate one of them we, even if we calculate say either LHL or only RHL we know the value so let's let's do the LHL so the limit is x tends to 0 from the negative side 1 minus cosine of 4x over 8x squared and now you might want to use the method I used before so that x equals 0 minus h so you know we can write our question this way 1 minus cos of 4 times 0 minus h over 8 times 0 minus h the whole square the limit is actually there was no need to do it here because anyways it was tending to 0 you know just I don't know it's just I like this notation sometimes so 1 minus cosine of negative 4h the cosine of a negative angle is just the, the positive angle so yeah 8 times minus h the whole squared is a squared now we'll have to use some half angle property so 1 minus cosine of 2 theta is 2 sine square theta
here it's yeah sorry I messed up the variable with half of the original angle 2 sine squared 2 h by 8 h squared I'll, I'll write the formula here so 1 minus cos 2 theta is 2 sine squared theta you know, angle gets reduced to half so you know we can divide the 8 to out sine squared 2 h all over um, 4 h squared I'm going to write the square root on the entire thing the limit h approach is 0 of sine of 2h by 2h the whole squared since it's a continuous function for all our purposes we can take the limit inside the square root limit is h approach is 0 the sine of 2h by 2h the whole squared and since h approach is 0 2h definitely goes to 0 our identity is satisfied this thing tends to 1, 1 squared is 1. Ok, we just calculated that the LHL is equal to 1 and we just needed either one of them. So F of 0 should be 1, therefore K is equal to 1. There we have it. Easy. Ok, now we have g of x is equal to y is equal to absolute value of x minus 1 plus the sine of x so you know I'll break it up for values less than and greater than 1 because you know that's where this absolute values would sign would be a determining factor so g of x would equal x minus 1 plus sin x for values where x is greater than or equal to 1 and minus of x minus 1 plus sin of x when x is less than 1 this thing So, yeah, so now we have, you know, two different functions for the LHL and the RHL. But, you know, we can still calculate, we can do some efforts, we can calculate. The LHL, the limit as x approaches 1 on the negative side of 1. minus x plus the sine of x so you know this would be used for the LHL that's what we did we just multiplied the minus sign inside so we have this now you can again use my method you can write or probably you know just for this example you might not want but in any case, okay, let me just write it out. So x equals 1 minus h. Now the entire question becomes the limit as h tends to 0 of 1 minus 1 plus h plus the sine of 1 minus h. these ones just cancel out the limit is h approaches 0 of h plus sine of 1 minus h we substitute h now this is 0 all we are left with is the sine of 1 and now we need we are going to use this for the RHL because this is for values greater than 1 so it includes slightly greater than 1 also so yeah so, RHL the limit is x goes to 1 from the positive side of 
x minus 1 plus the sine of x. Again, I'll use my method x is equal to 1 plus h. I'll let uh, h tend to 0. x minus 1 is just h plus the sine of 1 plus h. Substituting h is 0, we have the sine of 1. So basically, LHL equals RHL equals the sine of 1. Now, does f of 1 satisfy? Okay, so if we plug in 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0, sine of 1. Yeah, it satisfies f of 1, so it's continuous. So, I use this is g, g of 1. Yeah. It's continuous. So the last example for the day. Let h of x equal to um, 10 raised to the absolute value of x minus 1 all over x. So now when we have this now, now this sign depends on you know what value of x if you know x is less than zero will be a negative. So the best way is to convert this into a piecewise function like we did before. So we'll have 10 raised to x minus 1 all over x when x is greater than 0. 10 raised to minus x minus 1 all over x when x is less than 0. Now surprisingly when you substitute x is 0 over here 10 raised to 0 is 1, 1 minus 1, 0, then 0 by 0 is undefined. So when x equals 0, the function is undefined. I mean, before we used to just you know take the limit, but limit is an estimation. The definition of function is something absolute. So you know, so there, there is just gonna be a big blank in the graph. It's going to be a hole in the graph at x is equal to 0 although we can estimate the values because we have you know values for, we can estimate for values slightly greater than 0 and slightly less than 0 so, yeah means which means we can still calculate the LHL and RHL so the LHL will need this so the limit as x tends to 0 from the negative side of 10 raised to minus x minus 1 all over x. I'm not going to use the substitution because you know, it should be a little time consuming and I think you can do that, do that as an exercise. So you should remember our properties. We needed the we needed the exponent to match the denominator. Only way we can do that is introducing a negative here. So we multiply and divide by negative so we'll have negative 10 raised to minus x minus 1 divided by minus x now this negative and that negative will cancel out so you know, the expression is the same and now this thing just tends to the natural log of 10 if you I hope you remember the properties this negative and you know this will tend to the natural log of 10. So it's a negative natural log of 10 on the LHL side. So we got the LHL is the negative natural log of 10. Okay, so yeah. Let's calculate the RHL. The limit as x tends to 0 from the positive side. We need to use the upper part of it. We need to use this definition. Because you know we are slightly greater than zero. So ten raised to x minus one all over x. And you know there's no need to multiply or divide by negatives, it's just the direct formula now. The natural log of ten. Now take a look at that. The LHL is minus natural log of ten. The RHL is the positive natural log of ten. LHL is not equal to RHL and anyways anyways 
the function is undefined. So there is a big jump discontinuity. So it's like something like this. Something like this. This is the negative natural log of 10, positive natural log of 10. Yeah. Anyways, it's you know f of zero is undefined as I told you. As I said, there's a jump discontinuity, so you know there's a big gap, or you know like the function will jump over here at x is equal to zero. So I really hope you like this video, guys. Please comment down if you need more, if you need me to solve more examples of continuity. You know when you tell us to discuss the continuity, not at a specific point, but like the general continuity. Some textbooks have those questions. And uh, you know, I will be moving on to differentiability next time. So please stay tuned. If you like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Have a great day.